This October marks two years since I embarked on a debt-free journey. I started with $108,000 of debt and so far I've paid off about 50% of that debt. My goal was to be debt free by February 2021. However, I embarked on some, you know, financial setbacks recently that have put me off track. But I still am committed to being debt free. So I'm going to show you how I use every single dollar to reach my goal of being debt free one day. I'm Shayna of The Wealth Vibe and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. It's the first of the month, so I'm about to get ready to plan my budget for October. And I'm hoping to encourage you to do the same so that you can take control of your income so that you can live your best financial life. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you hit the like button. By hitting the like button, you tell YouTube that this is a great video to watch. And then in turn, YouTube is going to push this video out to more people. And the awesome thing that's going to happen is that we're all going to be able to live our best financial life because we're about to do our budget. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. I have income, y'all. I have income, and I'm super excited about it. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I recently lost my job in June so my income has decreased dramatically but I usually do teach as an adjunct instructor during the fall and spring semesters so I knew that once the fall semester started up I would have income again but not only that I'll also be teaching another course and this course pays a little bit more money and so I'm actually going to be teaching the four, first class of the term tonight. So I'm really excited about that. I do know how much money I'm going to be making for the semester, but I have not finished all of the paperwork and I have not received a paycheck yet. But I do expect to receive about $1,100 a month from the new teaching position that I had, have. And then the one that I always had, I'll be receiving about $750 a month. And then in addition to that, you may know that I do get paid from YouTube for the videos that, or for the ads that run on my videos. And I really appreciate you for your support and watching those ads because it really helps me out financially to be able to meet all my goals and to be able to continue to put out content. So I really appreciate you so much for your support. Then in addition to that, I also get some income from Instacart. So Instacart is a side hustle that I originally started off doing in October 2017. Really, that's where I started to make a lot of the money that I was able to put towards um, a lot of my debt. And since then, I've done a few videos about Instacart. And then when people use my link to sign up for Instacart, I get paid a certain amount of money. Um, based off of whatever region that they are in after they complete a number of batches. So for this month, so far based of, of how it's looking, I should get about $450 to $550. So the baseline amount of income that I should have for October is about $2,125. And I'm really excited about that because it's money that I'm able to bring in. And this is all money that I'm bringing in part time. So that's really cool. So what I've been doing with my time here recently is that I have been working on this YouTube channel to make sure that I put everything um, on a schedule and I am producing a lot of content I'm brainstorming so that way when I do get another full-time job everything is working like clockwork and I'm able to sustain the momentum that I was able to basically put in place now so I'm really happy that I'm able to also spend this time but also able to bring in a couple thousand dollars part-time so that's really good now let's move on to my expenses so the first category in my budget is related to giving so for giving I usually tie to my church 10% of my income although I'm no longer able to physically go to the church that I went to in Atlanta because I'm now living outside of Atlanta I am still tied into the church because I live stream and whenever I am in Atlanta, I go to that church. It's my church home. So I tie 10% there. And then also this month, my brother is turning 30 years old. And so I do want to get him a gift, although I'm sure he would understand 
if I did not give him a gift because he knows that I don't really have that much money. But I do want to get him something. So I plan to get him a really small gift of about $30. Now let's move on to housing. So as I just mentioned, I no longer live in Atlanta. When my lease was up in August, I decided to move in with my boyfriend temporarily. Well, that's my hope that it will be temporarily, unless we were to get married or something, but temporarily. So I am living with him. And as a result of moving, I put a lot of my stuff into storage. So I have a storage unit in Atlanta and I have to pay about $85 a month for that storage unit. And it really holds all of my furniture from my one bedroom apartment and everything. And I only really brought the essentials with me here to Columbus, Georgia. So in terms of additional rent, like for where I'm staying, I don't have to pay my boyfriend any rent. He is paying the full rent as he has been doing for the past year or so since he's been living in this apartment. So I don't have to pay any rent, any renter insurance, or anything else related to housing. So my housing expenses, and it's not really housing, it's more so like storage expenses, are about $85 a month. Now moving on to utilities. So because I do not have my own place and I also do not have to contribute to utilities while living with my boyfriend, I am only paying my phone bill. So if you recall, in August I went to Mexico for my boyfriend's 30th birthday and while we were in Mexico on the first day, I lost my phone. And so since then I have been using an old phone that he had and because I did not have a phone for myself and I needed to give him back the phone that I was using temporarily, I did purchase a new phone. So as you may know, the iPhone 11 came out recently and I did get one of those. It killed me to get one but I thought it would be a good investment because I am trying to do a lot better with my Instagram and it has this new um, new camera on it and I just thought that it might be a good investment that should last me for a long term. This time around I got insurance on my phone because as you know I paid off my iPhone 10s in May. Paid it off completely but because I lost my phone and I did not have insurance, I wasn't able to get a new phone, a new replacement, you know, out of like free. And so I decided that it makes sense for me to get insurance on my phone to protect my investment. So I do plan to ride out with this phone. I'm going to pay it off and I am going to have insurance on it so that if it ever gets damaged or lost or anything, I can just pay the insurance fee to get a replacement. So in terms of food, this is another area where I do not have to spend any money because my boyfriend has been so gracious enough to cover food expenses. But one thing that I don't want to do is ask him for money. So typically what happens is we go grocery shopping together or he'll say, babe, can you pick up X, Y, Z amount of things from the grocery store and I'll do like a weekly grocery shopping or, you know, for a few days and I'll do that and he'll give me money for that or he'll reimburse me. And that is fine. But in the sense of me going to go grab something to eat or pick up you know, something from the store that I personally want, like let's say if I wanted some more fruits or something, I don't want to ask him for $5 to buy some grapes. I want to be able to do that on my own. So I am putting aside some money in my budget for food, and this can cover restaurants or whatever as well, but I'm putting aside $100 in my budget to be able to feed myself without having to go to my boyfriend and be like, hey, can I get some money? Cause that is not, that's not what I want. Now when it comes to transportation, I do have some expenses there. Now typically I do spend about $140 on gas, but since I've moved here, my fuel costs have gone down dramatically for a number of reasons. So one reason is because I have not really been doing my delivery jobs since I've moved here. And partly because I don't want to have to ask Grubhub to transfer my market to Columbus and then have to go back to Atlanta. And recently I thought I was going to get a job. Like I thought for sure, like I was, they checked my references and everything for this job. So I like new expert transcripts, all like the whole nine. So I thought I was going to get this job. I did not get it. So I thought that I was going to be moving back to Atlanta. So I didn't want to have to transfer my Grubhub market 
to Columbus and then also ask again to have it transferred back to Atlanta. So I have not done that yet. So I have not worked Grubhub since I've been in Columbus. Another thing that I have not done is Instacart. And really to the, to, uh, or another reason why I haven't done those two delivery jobs is because my AC went out in my car after I came back from Mexico. And so I did a live about that if you recall the repair was going to cost about $580 total. I was willing to pay for that, had the money set aside for that. However, the part in my car is not available anywhere else besides the dealership. I've looked everywhere. I've taken your suggestions as well for looking elsewhere, but it's just not available anywhere because my car is only three years old. And it's a specific part to the Honda Civic. So it's not a widely available car uh, car part. And then when I did get the part, I did take the car to get labor done elsewhere. But when I took the car to get labor done elsewhere, that didn't work out either because they don't have the refrigerant needed to recharge the AC. And so I had to go back to the dealer to have them do it. So I actually haven't gone back to the dealer yet. My plan is to go this weekend to have them do it. So it's really, really hot here. And I just don't want to drive around in the heat doing delivery jobs until I get my car fixed. So I have not had to use my car that much. Most of the time I'm in the house. So my, my fuel costs have gone down to like, probably $50 a month, maybe even less. So I'm budgeting about $50 and we'll see how that changes once I do get my AC fixed and I do start back doing some of these delivery jobs. I also have this other expense under transportation. It's an abnormal expense and I'm so upset with myself that I have to pay this. But I went to FinCon in September. I had a scholarship to go to FinCon. Uh, FinCon is this conference for people who are in the financial industry or talk about finances through YouTube, blogging, radio, all types of things. It's for financial influencers in a sense. So I went to FinCon. It's in DC. My sister lives in DC. She has a car. I took her car to go meet up with a friend from undergrad. I met up with this friend and then on the way back, I got a speeding ticket. If you know DC, you know that DC's speeding limits are about 25 miles per hour <laughs> everywhere. And so I was going 32 miles per hour. So that cost me $100. So I'm going to have to pay my sister for the for the ticket that she got on her car. DC, 25 miles per hour. Can you believe it? So in terms of personal expenses, I am budgeting $50 for the month. I have already restocked on a lot of things that I needed like shampoo, conditioner, and all the other things. However, part of what I'm setting money aside for is to get my nails done. If you know, I like to get my nails done. Usually in my budgets, I have nails. If not fingernails and toes, I have my fingernails at the very least in my budget. However, to get my nails done, it costs about $90. Well, really that's for nails and feet. But I watched a video recently of a girl doing at-home gel nails and the set looks really nice. So I purchased the set, I purchased gel, and I just need a lamp. I actually have a lamp back at my parents' house, but I'm trying to weigh what would actually be more cost effective for my mom to actually mail me the lamp that I have or for me to buy a new lamp. But I am budgeting to buy a lamp this month so that I can do my nails because this is just not me. And I've talked about this recently in a recent video. If you're interested in checking it out, check it out here. It's really important while you're budgeting to have things in it that make you feel good, things that you like spending money on. But I just can't fathom spending $90 on my nails when there is a cheaper alternative. So I am putting it into my budget, but I'm putting it into my budget in a more economical way. So I do plan to buy a lamp and I do plan to have my nails done here soon. 
I have two major events that are coming up in the month of October. So Howard Homecoming, I went to Howard University for undergrad and it's homecoming time, it's homecoming season. And the special thing about this year is that it's actually my 10 year reunion. I graduated from Howard in 2009 and so all of my friends, everybody I went to class with is now coming to Howard to celebrate our 10 year graduation. And so um, I had already purchased my ticket to go to homecoming. I'm gonna be staying with my sister and I already purchased all the activities that I'm gonna be doing. But I probably am gonna be Ubering a bit or lifting, I usually use Lyft. But I'm probably gonna be using some type of, you know, transportation while I'm there either through the Metro, using my sister's car, but I'm not getting no tickets this time, or using Lyft. So I am budgeting some money for Lyft. In addition, I will be going to Chicago at the end of the month. My boyfriend has been talking at this um, real estate conference called the Make Real Estate Real Conference. And he speaks at this conference like twice a month. And so the last one for the year, I believe, is at the end of the month that he wants me to come and see him present, which is weird. He typically is like very like, don't, I don't want you to see me present. But he wants not only for me to see him present, but he's also pre-selling his course that he has coming out in February on wholesaling. And he also wants to just spend some time with me in Chicago and to meet his mentor and stuff like that. So he bought, he bought my ticket for Chicago and I don't really see myself having to spend any money either. So for travel, the only thing I'm planning to budget is for transportation in DC. On September 25th, my student loans went into repayment and luckily i did a video on this if you're interested in checking it out you can see it here by clicking on the car i don't have a payment because i'm on an income driven repayment plan and so that's really exciting for me that i don't have a payment and i talked about in the in the video it's really going to actually help me out a lot for having this 12 month period of having a zero payment because i do plan to pay something so that for this first month because i do have to you know fix my car and also pay my car insurance with our which are large expenses i am going to just pay the interest that accumulates on my loans for the month so far it seems like the interest is going to be about 260 something dollars but i'm going to pay a little extra round it off to 275 dollars and that is my plan to pay at least the interest every single month until i can now pay hopefully about a thousand dollars a month maybe in the next month or two is my goal to knock it up to a thousand dollars a month and so yeah i have i have a debt that i'm paying and i'm back on the debt payoff journey and i'm excited about it i guess i'm bittersweet about it because like who wants to pay you know debt but at the end of the day like i know that i'm going to be closer to my goal of being debt free by paying down my debt so i am happy about that if you've been encouraged to do your own budget i'm really excited for you because you're going to have some major wins in your financial life and to get you started i want you to check out this video right here it's going to give you my best tips for how to budget with confidence so that you have minimal stress through the process and if you want to have my budgeting tools you can check out the link down below so that you can shop my budgeting tools thanks for watching